On this episode, we talk about staycations in Arkansas. Should you stage your home yourself or hire a pro? And should I pass on this investment? Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Q&A Show. This is episode five of season two, so thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for asking questions. For those of you who are watching this for the first time, this is where you could send us questions about real estate, usually real estate related, or business, or investing, and we will do the best we can to answer those questions as a professional, quote unquote. Uh, <laughs> with me today is a very special person, Kurt. Say hi, Kurt. Hello, everyone. So you might recognize Kurt from the last episode where he was bot Kurt. <laughs> so, My alter ego. That's right. So Kurt is a super talented videographer. Um, uh, you know, last week we had Brad who shoots this show, but you also help out with this show. Mm -hmm. And you help out with a lot of our shows like the Home Sweet Arkansas show. That is all you. Um, so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a freelance video guy here in central Arkansas. Brad is actually a great friend and he's been a tremendous resource, a tremendously talented individual, but I kind of do the flip side of what he does. I love doing wedding films. And so I do wedding films yeah. all over Arkansas. We've been all over the region. In fact, I just got back from Dallas a few weeks ago shooting oh, cool. one there. So that's really outside of my stuff I do for pixel properties and for you. And I love doing home sweet Arkansas, uh, and, and all the other shows that we produce. I love wedding films. Films. I love telling stories, kind of the, the raw, cute stories, love stories from weddings that, that each individual couple brings to the table on their wedding day. So That's cool. Yeah. And I know I asked you a question before about Bridezilla and you were like, I really haven't had any of those yet. But that's like my, that would be like my fear in wedding films that it's like, or, yeah. or mom in law Zilla, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like oh my goodness. Well, I, so. I'm, I mean, I'm still really waiting on that <laughs> terrible, yeah. like, instance. I haven't had it yet. I've, I've loved everyone I've worked with, so it's That's been awesome. Good. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get right into the show. Let's do it. Poor Prey on Reddit asks, I purchased a foreclosed house in this area for $66,250 two and a half years ago that is providing a decent ROI. I'm interested in another house in the same area, but after crunching numbers, the only way for me to get a decent ROI is to offer 70K and hope that renovation costs, including closing costs and whatnot, don't exceed 15K. Even with these numbers, the ROI may only be 5.X percent. Should I pass? Uh, in short, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with all those numbers and everything, uh, you know, we put the long version of your question on there. It's a great question. I know you're looking at your numbers, you know your numbers, and that's really great. But in reality, if the numbers don't fit the criteria that you have set as an investor, you should definitely pass. Uh, be patient. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes investors make is they're not patient enough to find the ideal situation for their numbers. So if you know your numbers, you know your criteria, be patient, and hopefully you'll find it. Now, the other thing you have to be cognizant of as an investor is, is the area changing? So if that area is improving rapidly, then maybe you are uh, being too conservative with the return you could make compared to what you're making now. So check your rent rates, make sure you're charging enough. If you're buying and holding, if you're buying and flipping and you see those prices going up pretty quick, well, check what the high end is doing in that neighborhood. You know, see the people that have really maximized the flip, see what they're selling it for because your rate of return might be a little too conservative if the area is improving that fast. So those are the two things I would check if I were you. Uh, just be conservative with your numbers, but don't be too conservative and stick to your criteria. And maybe the criteria for your investment, what you want to stay the same. So in order to get that same return, now you actually have to change areas. And that's also common. So an area has improved too much. There's actually a couple of areas like that in Little Rock. We have two uh, hotbeds that were, people were investing in, turning and flipping. And now there's real competition there for owner-occupant investors, is what I call it, people that want to live in their house for a couple of years you know, uh, remodel it and then put it back on the market. And so they are willing to pay a little bit more because what they pay for up to market value, they make up for on the appreciation of the home over the two to three year period where flipper, he doesn't have time to appreciate that home. So they need the return right now. So also look at that and see what your competition might be. If that is a situation, you may need to go to an outlying area or an area just outside that to find the same type of deal or same type of price that you're looking for. And that's why we ask him the questions. <laughs> <laughs> 
Matt Weaver asked on Facebook, do you recommend a pro to set up your house to sell or is there enough info for people to do it themselves? That's a really good question. A lot of times when you're setting up a home to sell, you don't set it up as you would if you were going to live there. So it is going to be slightly different than a person who lives there. There is probably enough information for that online. You can probably look at YouTube. You can probably get some great suggestions. It's going to take time though. Um, for instance, there's one of the things I was working on my remodel and my friend was like, well, how long did that take? I was like, it took 15 minutes, but it took me three hours of YouTube to figure out how to do it. Right. And so the same thing with home staging, it could take you a lot of research. And if you're willing to put in that research and time to figure out exactly what looks good, then you could probably do it yourself. The other thing that a home stager could bring in is good furniture. So sometimes the furniture we use is the most comfortable, but it may not be the best looking on film. And that's really important when you go to sell your house. You want it to be the greatest looking situation and setup on film. And uh, if you don't have great furniture, sometimes it's best to get it out and shoot a blank room. And then now graphic design is good enough to where we could do virtual staging. And you can barely tell that it's virtually staged until somebody goes in there live and there's nothing there. You, it's really hard to tell online that the house was staged virtually. So there's a couple of different staging options. If you hire a home stager, it could cost a thousand or three thousand dollars a month if you're also renting the furniture, uh, because essentially it's kind of like the the furniture rental business, right? You're going to be taking out all of your furniture, renting their furniture to stage the home while it's there. Uh, the other thing that may happen if you um, want to stage it yourself is that you may or may not hit some of those points that a buyer really looks at as far as the flow and living space goes and living situation. Uh, so like your couch may be up against the wall, and so, but the home stager may know that in your situation, pulling the couch up from the wall a little bit, is gonna make the room seem bigger and it's gonna have the airflow. But, and so home stagers know when to do that, when not to do that, and it may be very room or flow specific, and I don't know that you could find that kind of information online. Uh, so I would maybe call a couple, see if you can get some consultations, like maybe a hundred bucks for a consultation or something. They come over, they tell you how to do it with your own furniture. Try that. That's probably what I would rather do than spending all the time and effort to study and research. Uh, your agent should be able to help you some, uh, but an agent who says, I'm going to stage your home for you. You have to ask if, are they going to sell the house or stage the house? Because it's different. You know, if they're spending all their time staging all of their listings, then they're going to find a hard time marketing the listings and getting the property out there. So usually, uh, you know, some of the top agents will have a home stager come in or they'll have somebody that works on their team that does the staging and that kind of thing. So I guess my answer is yes. You can. <laughs> <laughs> All of that to say, yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. All right. From Facebook, Billy Jean Petoniak asks, what is the best staycation in Arkansas? I love this question. Arkansas is the natural state. So if you're asking steak, staycation, my mind is automatically going to some of our state parks. Have you been to some of our state parks? I have, yeah. Like the cabins? Jean? Yeah, the, yeah. And the cabins and yeah. stuff that they have now that mm. are available. You can, you can rent a cabin on the lake, uh, really good like it's really good quality, which um, they didn't used to be that way. You know, some of the, right. you go to some of the state parks, they were a little run down. They've put a lot of money and work into them and they're really nice. It's like, it's like resort level in some cases. And so we've really enjoyed that. If, uh, you know, if we don't have time to take a huge road trip, uh, go into some of the cabins and lakes and that kind of thing. The other thing I would do in Arkansas would be the Buffalo river. Yes. Um, yeah. If you like getting out on the water and tent camping and things like that, they also have cabins up there now too. But uh, I love uh, going and doing a leg of the buffalo and then getting all your stuff out of the boat, and setting up at your tent, then tearing that down and then doing the second leg and then driving home. So that's that's really fun for me. So I like to get out, do the natural thing, yeah. um, and of course there's like parks and stuff, and there's you know hot springs that you can go to. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things there, but I would say state parks and the Buffalo River would be my go-to. Those are good ones. My wife and I stayed at the Arlington for our anniversary oh, just an hour awesome. away, and it was great. Yeah, the Arlington in Hot Springs, there's also the bathhouses there yeah. that you can go and tour, mm -hmm. and then there's that bathhouse brewery where you could get a flight of 18 beers. Have you seen this? It's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to share my picture. I've got a picture of all these. We, I mean, we taste tested everything. It was amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a good one, the Arlington. Awesome. So, uh, well, thanks everybody for joining the show. Do you have any questions for me before we go? I do. I was thinking about one, uh, just talking about having someone come in to set up your house, right. kind of taking that a more broader approach, trying to sell your house yourself. I, the only people I've known who've yeah. tried to do for sale by owner, I know my parents tried it several years ago. I've had friends do it and it never seems to end well. Are there any <laughs> pros to trying to not use a yeah. realtor ever? 
Yes, uh, if you're only surrounded by bad realtors. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's not good in every industry, right? And so sometimes selling yourself could be a better result or a smoother result or making more money than a realtor that is, you know, below average. So I would say before you sell, interview everybody you can. Interview several agents. Make sure you're picking the top agent for the job. They should earn you more than they cost. And if they don't, then they're probably average or less. Uh, even if you sell the home on your own, you have to think about what you're really saving though. Because most of the time, the person bringing the offer is going to be an agent. I mean, I'm, we have 30,000 buyers in our database currently. So if I see your home on the market, then I can just send an email to 30,000 people and say, hey, are you interested? And so if, if you've given me the right to show your house for like a, you know, a percent commission or something like that, then I can email everybody and say, hey, this house is for sale. So I'm going to bring my client. But in that case, I'm representing them. So all the negotiation that I'm doing is for their benefit, not yours. And I, by trade, am a professional negotiator. It's what I do all day, every day is negotiate contracts and deals. And I know how to give you the purchase price you want, but save my client thousands of dollars by giving them the terms they want. And so while you think, hey, we're getting a list price offer, I know what I'm doing is saving my client a whole bunch of money in the situation. Right. You've also given up a percentage of the commission, usually about half of what you normally would have to pay. In those situations, you have to think, what are you really saving? As a for sale by owner, even the contracts I present to you, you should take to an attorney. And you should have an attorney look it over to make sure the attorney and you both are in agreement that this is a fair deal and this is what you should be doing, right? If you get a attorney to start reviewing the paperwork, that's going to cost money. And an attorney is paid whether the deal closes or not. So then that takes a chunk of what you could have made off the sale of your property. The other thing that removes a chunk is the negotiation. I could get you down just slightly below market value. You think it's a good deal. My clients benefit, but now you're slightly below market value, but you don't really know that because maybe you didn't price your home right, or maybe you left money on the table. And so that's costing you another two, 3%. So now what have you saved going for sale by owner? Zero dollars. But you've had to show your house. You've had to get it ready yourself. You've had to do the hours of research. You've had to stage it yourself. You've had to uh, you know, know what colors to paint, know what all this other stuff to do. And you've really only saved zero or maybe 1%. And the question is, is it worth it? And that's just with a okay agent, a really good agent is he's going to take you to the cleaners because there'll be, there's some ruthless agents out there. So, uh, I would say get your best interest protected, pay an agent to help cover you. Um, and somebody that knows what they're doing. That's a great negotiator that has smooth systems and processes and hopefully can sell you at or above market value with their marketing and all the incredible video they do, Kurt right? That's right. <laughs> this is a good man. So, <laughs> so in short, that's the stuff I would look at. Yeah. You know, they, they have to have good, smooth transactions and processes. They have to have really great negotiation skills and you could test their skills. Ask an agent to discount. If they do it right away, if they give money out of their pocket that fast, then how fast are they going to discount your price when another agent calls them? Right? So test their negotiation skills, see how good they are. Because sometimes the cheapest agent that could cost you more money than doing it for sale by owner. Mm. Absolutely. Good question. Well, yeah, I've, I've never known anybody who's tried for sale by owner where it's ended well. So I asked that to say, oh. use a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for watching the show. I appreciate it. Uh, this was episode five of season two. So we're going to shoot some more episodes coming soon. Uh, so please send us your questions. You can put them in the comments or you can just use hashtag real QA and we'll find it wherever it is on social media. So thanks for watching.